This new pope, who has gone to great lengths to project simplicity and openness, gave a remarkable press conference on the flight back to Rome. Such a striking difference from his often timid predecessor, who only took pre-selected questions from the press. Pope Francis laughing and joking with reporters, speaking off the cuff for 80 minutes. And here was the moment that is getting so much attention. The Pope saying, quote, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has good will, who am I to judge? Compare that to Pope Benedict, who called gays objectively disordered, or John Paul II, who called homosexual acts against natural law. Now, while Pope Francis's comment is making global waves tonight, it's important to note the Pope said nothing to suggest acceptance of gay sex or any other change in church policy. It's fair to say that we as mere mortals with a very finite lifespan rarely if ever understand or grasp when world-shattering events are happening right around us, save, of course, if it has to do with the notching of a game-winning score when we have everything save the water heater in the house bet on the outcome, or if it has something to do with some inane reality star being shoveled into jail while wearing too much mascara and the wrong color of shoes to incarceration. But maybe, just maybe, if we slowed down a tick and took notice of what's around us, we might realize we not only live in extraordinary times, but we live in those moments that could change the face of a planet in what is little more than the blink of a cosmic eye. In an unprecedented show of openness to the real lives of many Catholics today, a Vatican document released Monday said gays should be accepted, and there are positive aspects to a couple living together without being married. Homosexuals have gifts and qualities to offer the Christian community. Are we capable of welcoming these people, guaranteeing to them a fraternal space in our communities? The document was released midway through a two-week meeting of Catholic bishops on family issues and summarized the closed-door debate so far. No decisions were announced, but the tone of the text was one of almost revolutionary acceptance, a far cry from the condemnation of the past. The bishops did underscore that gay marriage remained off the table, but it acknowledged gay partnerships had merit. We must respect the dignity of every person. Perhaps not since the then-revolutionary findings of Vatican II in the 60s had the Catholic faith been turned on its head. A pope was espousing radical views, the likes of which confused many, angered even more. But despite the reaction, Pope Francis was not about to be stalled in a mission he, as a man of God, no doubt believes is what he was placed on this earth to do. Just a week ago, the church released a historic document asking Catholics to consider acceptance of gays. But the final document drafted on Saturday reversed that decision. Pope Francis, who wants to modernize the church, called on the assembly not to fear change. He paraphrased from Pope Paul VI, the very man whom he was honoring with a beatification. By carefully surveying the signs of the times, we are making every effort to adapt our ways and methods to the growing needs of our time and the changing conditions of society. The Pope's message in response to the events of the past week, God is not afraid of new things. And now those who follow the world's largest religion have a simple choice to make, of standing with their Pope, their anointed leader, interpreting what he means to fit a specific message, letting the message stand for exactly what it is and pretending it never happened, or embrace his message and put the church on new and for very, some uncomfortable ground. On the matter of homosexuality, the Bible's very clear. In Leviticus, Old Testament, the Bible states the following two passages. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And if a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. However, in Proverbs, the Bible states in the words of God, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. And in Romans, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. To some, the messages are mixed and open to interpretation. Others, like one post I saw on a Catholic website, called the Pope sick and twisted, a messenger of Satan. The time has come for every Catholic to be heard, and consider they too are now part of what has already become a time of history or infamy. Speak up, Catholics. In this instance, silence is far from golden. And that is telling it like it is. Next hour here on Midpoint, why the NAACP is dead wrong in pushing for the legalization of medical marijuana. How long will it take to defeat the various new smartphone encryptions? And why Scott Walker is truly in the fight of his political life. That and so much more right here on Midpoint, where we question everything.